One of the most interesting things about pre-season testing finally getting underway is all the wonderful tech that we get to look at. It's no holds barred, no more launch specs, all the teams are getting down to brass tacks. I'm also joined by our technical expert, Tim Wright, who has been spending most of the day poring over the various bits of technology that we've seen across the Formula One grid. Tim, thank you very much for joining me. And one of the key things that we've seen from the first day of testing is finally the Racing Point RP20 after its livery launch last week. Yeah. We got to see the full thing. Now, when it came out of the pits, it looked a lot like last year's Mercedes in a lot of ways. Mm. And everyone on social media was raving about how it's just a pink Mercedes. But you've had a look and there's a lot more than, than meets the eye, isn't there? Yeah, there's, um, th- these are subtle differences that I've noticed um, having been down into the pit lane and had a closer look. Uh, it mainly concerns the f- the front wing. Um, on first look, it, it is very similar, but there are subtle differences with the flaps, the way the flaps, the, the, I mean, the, the shape and the arrangement of the flaps, the way they're mounted. Uh, the main plane itself is slightly less swoopy than the, the Mercedes. Uh, the pylons are slightly differently mounted plus they have, don't have a what I would call a gurney on the bottom of lip. Uh, the other difference is I would say there are a lot less, that, I mean the barge boards are similar but there are a lot less fins than the Mercedes use. There are two um, sort of strakes along the side of the, the, the chassis uh, which the Mercedes doesn't have those are the main differences that I, I can see just from peering into the garage. The Racing Point uses the Mercedes wind tunnel. Sure. And obviously they've kind of thrown their lot in for, for 2020. Does that kind of make sense to you as a kind of design standpoint or would you have gone for an evolution, do you think? No, I mean, it makes a certain amount of, of, of um, sense. But when you actually copy the sort of shape of the nose and everything, it looks a little bit too obvious. Um, yeah, you're right. It's just a pink Mercedes, uh, basically. Uh, and to be uh, fair to them, I mean, the pace this morning, certainly when they were running, was it would look pretty good. Um, I think uh, Perez was quickest for quite some time before Bottas um, pipped him. But uh, so the car obviously works on a on a on a one lap. And just wandering around the pit lane as well, you had quite a lot of time to peer into what people are doing for this year. And what were other things that caught your eye? Well, I was mainly looking at uh, front wing setups um, as much as I can see. I mean, it's difficult. I mean, I know they're they're not supposed to have boards and things up in front of the garages, but a lot of them still do. Um, it's, uh, It's just interesting to see the philosophy behind the way people are are trying to get the air to turn around the front wheel and and, and use the barge boards, and um, there are, as I say, there you know there are as many iterations of that as there are teams in the pit lane. So it it's it's just an interesting study. Um, I need to have a, a little bit more. Uh, insight into it to tomorrow or as the test goes on and we'll you know we'll pick up some more bits and pieces as we go along the other car obviously which is impressive today was the red bull and again attention to detail on the front wing and, and around the, the barge boards the, the scoops on the side of the nose it's all very nicely done and the interesting thing was that they seem to have concentrate a lot more on running the hard tyre today uh, and their pace looks, I would say, pretty good. The only other car I was impressed with was, uh, and it took a while for them to get going, was the Alfa Tori. And I think certainly their front end setup is very interesting. It's quite a difference to some of the others in in the way that they've used the flaps. The flaps are bigger sections uh, so they, they're obviously loading the front a lot more 
uh, than they have done previously. Um, and it, it was a bit of a surprise because Kvyat obviously set that time just a slightly faster than Verstappen for a, a brief number of laps. So they've obviously got something. Um, yet to see what their long runs are like. Yep, uh, absolutely. For smorgasbord of new of new tech um, to see on display, and I'm sure we'll see much much more over the test uh, as people run through their run plans and run through sure. their aero as well. And we also got our first glimpse of the Renault uh, as well, which has kind of gone from Merck style front end as well. Um, we only got glimpses of that last week on their sort of launch that wasn't a launch, but does it look impressive? Does it look like a car that can go and challenge the top three or the top four, or is it still too early to say? It's it's a bit early. Um, it was interesting that both the, uh, the Renault and the McLaren set virtually identical <laughs> times. Um, so they've obviously picked something up um, because I think I think science this morning in the in the McLaren was taking advantage of, of the circuit conditions more than anything else. Um, but it certainly looks like uh, when Ricardo was driving it, he was able to wring a little bit more time out of it. So, I mean, as we say, as, as the test goes on, we'll, we'll see a lot more. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Tim. And stay tuned for more from this week's testing and next week as well.